elasticity is a way to measure how responsive people are to changes in price. <clears throat> if a small change in price leads to a big change in quantity, then the demand curve is said to be elastic at that price. If even a large change in price leads to a small change in quantity, then the demand curve is said to be inelastic at that price. We should note that this is related to the steepness of the demand curve, but a steep demand curve will still have a region of elastic demand and a region of inelastic demand. So what determines elasticity? Basically, there are two things. One is the availability of substitutes. And two would be the price, or their price, of those substitutes. Remember, substitutes are any two or more goods that can basically be used at least somewhat interchangeably. This actually leads us to the second law of demand. So the first law of demand, as you recall, is that demand curves slope down. Or more formally, there exists an inverse relationship between the price of a good and the quanti quantity of the good demanded. The second law of demand is that elasticity increases over time. Now, if elasticity is determined by the availability of substitutes and their price, then increasing the number of substitutes and decreasing their price will lead to consumers responding more and more to changes in the price of the original good that we're talking about. For example, if you owned all of the magic pills in existence, you would wield tremendous power. But if someone else came along and recreated the formula for the magic pills, you suddenly would have far less power. If you raised your price, your customers would go to the other seller instead of you. This is why economists, in general, aren't all that afraid of monopolies, at least over time. Sure, they might wield tremendous power in that they are the only seller of a particular good, which is what monopoly means, single seller. But that power is seductive and other entrepreneurs will come in and try to copy the new product. This will lower the price and reduce, and possibly even eliminate, the power that any one of them wields over the customer. Other examples uh, would include the price of gasoline and your changes in your behavior. So for example, if the price of gasoline goes up, you might respond to this in the short run by just simply driving less. But if the price of gas goes up and this increase is expected to last, let's say, forever, you might decide to buy a more fuel-efficient car, find ways to reduce the weight of your car as much as possible, so perhaps you won't carry around your golf clubs in your trunk, but will instead leave them at home unless you're going golfing. You might move closer to work or wherever you go most frequently, or you might try to do more things online or remotely. These are much bigger changes than simply driving less. Now there are a few other factors that influence the elasticity, but they're all related to these. We tend to be more price sensitive to things that account for larger proportions of our income. So for example, you will almost certainly shop around for a house or apartment much more than you'll, sp uh, than you'll shop around for, for example, a pack of gum. We also tend to be much more price sensitive to things that we plan to buy repeatedly compared to things we only buy once. We'll spend much more time researching treatment options and their costs for chronic diseases than we will for things like a broken bone. The time and effort that it takes to find the best deal is important, but we should also remember that this time and effort is costly.